But before we do that, I want to talk about what's going on in wrestling this week, because boy, there was some big news this week. Mm. Uh, Tony Khan had quite the week, uh, the, the latest news as you and I are talking now, I guess I should give everybody a heads up. This is a Monday morning podcast, so we can't effectively do this <laughs> with Sunday night in the rear view mirror. So I don't know exactly what happened the last night on pay-per-view, but I know it was a financial success. There's some other news that, that we haven't touched on yet. It's been speculated for a few weeks, but this Wednesday, he made it official. Tony Khan purchased ring of honor. And I don't know that you or I saw that. I know that we both knew folks who were thinking, Hey, what's the value of this thing and what could be possible with this thing. But really, and truly, if anybody was going to get it, it only made sense for Tony Khan. Did it not? Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. You know, I mean, you could argue that because of the, just the power of, of Peacock and that platform that any additional wrestling content might be a good strategic move for them, but it makes more sense for Tony. Yeah. Given, given his roster. Um, so yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Absolutely. It, it, if it made sense to anybody, it made sense to Tony Khan. I don't have any inside information. I haven't spoken to anyone at all about this, but I think a lot of times where guys like Mark Madden or even earlier this month on this program, you said, Hey, this guy debuts, there's no time for him. That guy debuts, there's no time for him. All of that starts to make sense. If he really is going to run another promotion, because now instead of everyone just being on YouTube and there's nothing wrong with that, that is a worldwide platform and Hey, we can see our products on YouTube. So we're big YouTube supporters. Still. The idea is where once upon a time we thought, man, this roster is just way too bloated. Well, it makes a lot of sense now. Does it not? <laughs> that's a, that's a pretty cool leap forward. So let's, let's play that out just for a minute. Tony acquires Ring of Honor. What does he actually acquire? And I'm and, and I'm saying this almost rhetorically. I don't know. I am just like you. I don't know anything. Well, I don't know all the terms, but I believe you know based on prior conversations I'd heard that there were still clearances on some of the Sinclair stations. So maybe airing some products on some of that might make sense. But even let's stop there. Let's let's stop there. I've seen the the Sinclair station list. I, at least I saw it a year ago. I know what it looks like or six months ago. Um, not a lot of value there. Now here, here's the, here's, let me, let me look optimistically at it and then let me Camera. go over to the other side of the table and look, analyze it more optimistically because we don't know. There's so much we don't know. So right. could have a fucking awesome plan in his back pocket that none of us know about. So let's, let's assume that, that it's an awesome plan and there's a strategy there and we're going to take advantage of the Sinclair syndicated network because those are all syndicated television stations, right? They're locally owned and independent stations that are not in the best of day parts. It is what it is. Yeah. How do you, how do you, if you're going to do what you just suggested, if Tony is going to do what you just suggested, and now we've got this bloated or not bloated, we've got this amazing roster of talent, and I don't really have enough television on TBS to take advantage of it. Let's start another promotion on another television network. So you're going to produce another television show, assuming it's exclusive that talent that's assigned to that new ring of honor show, we'll call it that is exclusive to the ring of honor show. Now you can take advantage of a, of a huge roster with some great talent, in it. but you got to pay to produce that show. And there is not enough return on the investment of producing a separate show. If you expect to monetize it on the Sinclair network, because guess what? That's why they sold it. Well, hang on now. He's already doing that in Orlando. Who's already doing what? Tony Khan has been running two YouTube shows out of Orlando. Right. So in my head, you could just slide that over there, but I think the highest and best use to use a, a real estate appraisal term of that Sinclair, those Sinclair time slots, if that really was part of the deal, I don't know, but if it was, man, wouldn't you just make that like almost your syndicated, I mean, it becomes a commercial 
for what you have going on with AEW. It's another it's way. An to expensive commercial. Shooting a show for YouTube and shooting a show for television are two different things. Number one. Um, no, number two. two well, hang on now. I'm not. I'm not even suggesting that that becomes Ring of Honor. I, I think the higher, the highest and best use of Ring of Honor. I mean, I could be wrong, but if Tony really did want, let's go backwards. One of the biggest line item expenses or, or revenue streams for WWE is television rights. And we know that Tony is getting whatever it is, 43, 45 million a year, whatever for AEW. However, there's another big feather in the cap of Vince McMahon, and that's the streaming game. And from the very beginning, there's been chatter behind the scenes and whispers, especially when we saw it, like adorning the ring skirts and the turnbuckles and all that, that HBO max, who is a Turner property or Tom Warner, but whatever it is for, for, for the moment. Yeah. For the moment, either that's way, gonna change, that's going to change very soon. The, the idea that, Hey, we need a library, you know, the, I, as far as I know, they only recorded one show. It was a, an AEW house show that they still recorded. So they've got that. And then they've got everything they taped in Orlando. And then of course, all the uh, dynamites and rampages, but now they have all the historical from ring of honor. You can use those packages in, in your AEW program, but you could also run ring of honor, almost like your NXT and it could be, it could live and exist on HBO max. It, you could syndicate it. But to me, the syndication piece of that, all the Sinclair network, I think I would use that as commercials to just hammer AEW. Those could be recap shows. They could be, think about the old, the way ECW used to do their stuff. A lot of the commercials in ECW were to buy their videotapes where to buy their merchandise, where to buy their pay-per-views, things like that. I just, I, I like the idea of we're going to create our own competition. And I thought when, when AEW first started candidly, since Cody was the NWA champ, when it felt like that was going to become a thing, it sure did seem like to me, Hey, uh, the NWA world title is going to be on AEW, and they're going to have their own little inner promotional thing that didn't happen, but it could happen now with ring of honor. Could it not? could but look that was the original intent that's why thunder existed we're, yeah. you know, we're going to have two shows they're each going to have their own separate rosters that's what smackdown and raw are by the way i i was i never was successful with a two-brand strategy and i would argue that while wwe is obviously successful in terms of um a financial perspective raw and smackdown are obviously generating a lot of money from a creative perspective Nobody, nobody ever bought in. Yeah. Nobody ever bought in. It's a tough thing to do. And if WWE hasn't been able to figure it out in however many years, um, it'll be interesting to see if anybody else does. But it, look, again, I'm going to try to stay in the optimistic as opposed to the analytical frame of my mind. But people are throwing things out there like, well, HBO Max. Well, that's because it's part of the Warner family for the moment. And I bring that up, not to be a jackass, but... Things, things could change very abruptly for everything associated with Warner Media right now. Yeah, when Zaslav comes in, and he's already—we're talking about the David Zaslav, the guy that's going to be overseeing all of Turner. Um, he's got a different perspective on things. Yeah, he's talking about turning CNN inside out and upside down. That's a big move. That's a huge move. Yeah, since television, since news is probably the only profit center, one of the most, got to be careful what I say, news is probably one of the more significant revenue centers within turn. Um, within all television. I mean, can it all tell it? Yeah, it's you, true. You buy local television just here in Huntsville, the most expensive real estate you can buy is the 10 o'clock news. Yep. I mean, you know, you could be on the number one show, whatever it is every year. It's a little different, you know, 20 years ago, it was American idol. And yeah, that would, that would maybe beat it. But outside of that 10 o'clock news is the prime time. And so it makes sense uh, to your point, if you're fiddling with your biggest revenue driver, because you know, it, it, and here's the reason why, cause I, I'm sure some of our listeners are thinking, well, I don't watch the news. Yeah. But those who do don't usually tape it. They watch it live. And that's the difference because if you're watching a sitcom or a drama or something like that, buddy, we want to DVR that and why? So we can fast forward the commercials. And I know you do that when you listen to our show. I get that. That's why ad free shows exist. There you go. <laughs> but you know why the news works? Because nobody DVRs the 10 o'clock news and watches it later. You sit through the commercials. So 
that becomes really the most valuable real estate you have because everyone understands like here in Alabama, man, we're going to watch college football in the news live outside of that, we're going to tape it. And my point is if Zaslav, apparently again, I don't know him. Well, I do actually know him, but clearly have not had a conversation about this, right? But if you just, just read the room and see the kind of moves, look at discovery as a platform. Yeah. I, who knows what, and I'm not, again, I'm being very optimistic here. I'm trying to be, perhaps nothing will change from, from a programming point of view, from a philosophical point of view, as it relates to the growth of Turner 10, 20 years into the future, perhaps it will stay exactly the way it is right now. I don't believe that for a second, but perhaps I'm wrong and it will, then this is all great news. But if I'm, if history and not just my own history with AOL and Time Warner, but if history within the media industry suggests anything, it's that things are going to change. And yeah. nobody knows what, how that change is going to affect everything within Warner Media, including, including AEW. You don't, it could be better, it could be the same, or it could be dramatically worse. So, look, before I make this point, I never watch HBO Max. I have no idea what's on HBO Max. I'm not, do you watch it, Conrad? I, I love it. You're missing out on some good stuff. What, give me an example. Just. So the shows you would normally watch on HBO, uh, you know, you can find them there. Uh, so like righteous gemstones, I watch every Sunday night. I used to watch that on HBO on direct TV. Now I watch it uh, on, on HBO max. And there's some, some original content that's there, but you get all the legacy stuff too. old, great movies. For instance, Eric, you could go and, and watch every episode of the Sopranos right now. You could watch every episode of sex in the city right now. And okay. I know that you but that's legacy content. Like in my group chat, which we've talked about a few times here on the show, I've got friends who watch rewatch the Sopranos every single year. And once upon a time you had a DVD and pull it off the shelf and da, 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 da. But now HBO max, it's at your fingertips, ready to roll. And it, you know, just so everybody listening, cause maybe everybody hasn't put this together. It's everything from Cinemax and HBO together. That's the reason it's HBO max. And I, I use it at least every, I don't know, two days, three days, Megan and I absolutely love HBO max. Okay. So it sounds to me like it's a legacy premium content channel, premium, meaning originals, yeah. Sopranos, you know, those are all high, pretty high profile, uh, brands and, and episodes. So. And this is my point. When you're programming HBO Max, just like you have to go through, and I'm part of these discussions, you know, off and on throughout the month, when we're talking about, you know, programming at freeshows.com, for example, what kind of original content are we trying to create so that we're satisfying our existing audience and growing it even more? What you're doing, Conrad, is you're programming a network. And when you program a network, you're programming that network and you're trying to create content that satisfies your core audience and allows it to grow. Think of HBO Max as a great Italian restaurant. And they're going to have all of the HBO is going to have the best variety and quality of Italian food that you can find on television. And then somebody comes in and says, Hey, let's put some Kung Pao chicken in there. Wait a minute. This is an Italian restaurant. Why are we putting Kung Pao chicken on the menu? That's not what people come here for. So if you think of it in terms of programming, and this is where things get dicey. This is why when there's a change in ownership, a change in culture, a change in philosophy in terms of growing a network, that's where acquisitions and mergers take on a, a life of their own because at the very top, David Zasloff, just like he's doing with CNN, he's changing it dramatically. But are you, are you, does anybody really think, or we, we think he is going to change CNN dramatically, but does anybody think that somebody's going to go, hey, this wrestling thing is working so well. Let's introduce Kung Pao chicken into our Italian restaurant menu. I don't think so. It doesn't fit. That was the problem with WCW during the AOL Time Warner merger. Time Warner, AOL, didn't want wrestling on their menu. 
it didn't fit their vision of what that menu should look like three years, four years, five years, six years in the future. And to think that, hey, it's HBO Max, they're part of Warner, so it's an automatic fit, I think is a pretty big leap of, of faith. I don't, I don't see that as easily as a lot of people do. So who knows? But in, in the end of it, all of the conversation about is it, was it a good deal or not for Tony? I think it was a good deal. If Tony's goal ultimately is to build independent of Turner, his own streaming platform, absolutely the acquisition of Ring of Honor makes sense. It's not going to make financial sense in the short term. It's just not. How many people around in, in the United States, the, tele, the United States television viewing audience, how many of them even know what Ring of Honor is? Well, listen, though, here's the thing. No, no, I, no, let me finish, though. I, no, you're 100% right on that, but I don't okay. think that's the value. I think sometimes, you know, we look, we, have, we all have a tendency to just look at things for what they are. Right. But you got to play that tape all the way through. If Tony wanted to get in the streaming game, he needs a library. And perhaps this is a way, I don't know all the terms of the financials. I don't know that it'll ever be discussed, but let's say he bought the thing for $10 million. If he can make a one-time $10 million investment, and now he can parlay that into a five-year, $10 million per year streaming deal, well, he just turned 10 million into 50. Conrad, you, that's where I was going. Yeah. And I said, let me finish. Okay. It's short-term. It is not going to be profitable. Correct. Be, all right. But three years from now, five years from now, seven, 10 years out, because streaming, streaming platforms are popping up every day. And it's here to stay. That, that, to that's stay. getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, guess what? C content becomes more and more and more valuable over the course of time. Content that probably wasn't worth anything five years ago, conceivably, is not worth quite a bit of money. Yeah. B because the market has grown, but the ability to feed it with content is, has not. And by the way, that's a situation that's going to become more exacerbated over time because a lot of independent producers are getting bought up by big producers and studios and networks. And you don't have, even five years ago, 10 years ago, there were a lot of what Jason Hervey and I used to have, a lot of in small independent production companies that were fast, they were furious, and they, were, they, they could move easily into certain markets. And, and types of content that doesn't exist anymore. A lot of the great independent production companies, you know, take, you know, Tom Beers, original productions, for example, original productions was the production company that created monster garage with Jesse James. And then Tom went on to create just about every top, um, non-scripted reality show, particularly testosterone driven ones that were all from the ice road truckers and other, there's been so many of them, I'm not going to name them. I talked to Tom Beers a couple months ago, or maybe long, might have been a year ago now, because I've known Tom for 25 or 30 years. And Tom said to me, Eric, as much, and Tom is one of the most prolific and successful te independent television producers in Hollywood. He, you arguably, he's more successful than Mark Burnett. Mark Burnett wow. did some really big things first, but Tom, probably in terms of dollar volume, more successful or at least as successful as Mark Burnett. Tom told me a year ago, Eric, if I had to survive in the business environment that exists today, even with my track record, which is phenomenal, um, he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So, the, and this is good for Tony, when I'm, and I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, I apologize, but I like oh, to great. enlighten, or at yeah. least give a, people a reason why I have the perspective I have. So as these independent production companies are evaporating or getting bought up by larger vertically integrated big studios and things like that, um, at the same time that the streaming platforms are growing and growing and growing and looking for content, guess what? Content becomes even more valuable. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you 100%. My opinion, short term, that library is going to mean absolutely nothing. And in a lot of cases, it looks like shit. You could do anything with it anyway. It looks like it was build out a phone in a high school gym, but there is still some great content there. Well, and you've also got the legacy of these performers. Like, you know, for instance, uh, there was a lot of pre Hulk Hogan stuff in the AWA. So it made sense to go ahead and pick up that AWA library for WWE because right. you had all the early Hulk Hogan stuff. Well, now you've got all the early Daniel Bryan stuff. You've got all the early CM Punk stuff and who knows what else, but 
I'm so excited that this wound up with Tony. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad it didn't just wind up collecting dust on the shelf. And candidly, I'm glad it didn't go to WWE. If for only that reason that right. we have been talking about for the last few weeks, and there's just so much talent that he doesn't have a platform to show and having so many great top talent and not enough TV is maybe not the best situation. Now, in theory, he's got it because that same talent can be under another banner and it doesn't feel less than, and I don't mean to dismiss those hardworking boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen who work in Orlando and do those tapings for dark and elevation and all that. But the reality is it is viewed as a B show. If you've got a show on TBS and you've got a show on TNT, and then you've got a show on YouTube, it feels less than, and that's not necessarily fair. It doesn't mean there's not great content there, but it almost became filler throwaway. But if we run it under a different banner, now it gives it a new flavor. So for me, for my money, OVW was very successful with creating superstars for the WWE roster, but T and uh, T and uh, NXT, I'll get it out did a much better job of building anticipation and a brand with those takeovers and those specials. And well, here's a new opportunity. So I'm so excited that Tony got it. Uh, I, I think let me, make, let, let me make one more point before we yeah. go. Cause I know you want to shift gears here. Here's here's perhaps a short term play that will matter with the ring of honor acquisition. If, if Tony's able to, and his team, is able to figure out a way to use Ring of Honor and its legacy and the fact that some of the talent that's in AEW got their start early on in Ring of Honor. There's a lot of connective tissue between Tony's current roster and the legacy of Ring of Honor. What if they're able to use that and use Ring of Honor as a backdrop to launch stories from? Because now you've got a lot of people, much like they did with um, CM Punk and Eddie Kingston, even though it only lasted for about 45 seconds, it was still pretty fucking cool. Yeah. The potential of that story, because when you, I remember when you laid it out to me, I went, oh man, that could be really, really good. Well, now you've got an entire, you know, you've got Ring of Honor, you've got access to the library to use to help fill in the backstory holes that you need to to, to tell a really good story going forward in 2022. I think that's a short-term opportunity that, that I don't know if it justifies whatever the cost was, because we don't know what that was, but right. it doesn't fucking matter. You've got it now, use it to the best of your ability. And I think using it as a platform to launch new stories, again, great stories have great backstory. Yes. You know, creating a new story out of thin air is challenging. It's obviously done all the time. Um, Sometimes really well, and sometimes eh, not so well. Sometimes somewhere in the middle. But now you've got a real backstory that you can enhance to launch new stories from. And that's what I hope we see. Well, either way, I'm so excited uh, for the, the hardworking boys and girls of AEW. What a big week, man. You know, the million dollar gate for, for pre sales, a live dynamite, a live rampage, a big pay per view. Oh, and Ring of Honor. Uh, congrats to Tony Khan. And hey, how about congrats for Pat McAfee? He pulled off the impossible man.